Welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be presenting on Franklin Industries whistle. Welcome everyone. Today I will be presenting on the Franklin Industries whistleblowing case. My name is Trevor Ram and I'm with Southern Utah University. Um, I'll be going over some of the basic facts of the case. I will be discussing a impl uh, an implementation of the giving voice to values framework and then I'll be discussing a potential whistleblowing um, protocol and how that might apply to this case as well. So the facts of the case are Natalie Garson, uh, she's an accountant with Franklin. She gets wind of some possible fraud from internal audit. Um, internal audit goes in and finds out that there definitely is fraud going on an embezzlement done by Denny King, who's the accounting department manager. Natalie informs the controller there at Franklin about the fraud, and pretty much subsequent to her informing the controller, Natalie finds herself demoted at the company. Natalie also, you know, a month later, she files a claim with HR of retaliation, and six months after that, um, HR rules against her, saying that there was no retaliation because HR didn't find any evidence of fraud. Um, it's also noteworthy that the corporate culture at Franklin is to not rock the boat, and the board of directors is made up mostly of insider directors. For example, the CEO, he's also the chairman of the board, and it seems that over time this pattern of the board going along with the CEO's directions has uh, kind of cropped up there at the company. So turning to the giving value, giving voice to values framework, um, if Natalie is going to use this framework to address um, her concerns at the company, she's going to have to start by countering some of the rationalizations made by the board. And the primary rationalization made is that the company is just better off not even resolving this matter any further. Um, the company is just saying, okay, look, the fraud has been discovered, has been documented by internal audits, so there's nothing else that needs to be done. And doing any more would rock the boat. It would go against the corporate culture and it would damage the company's reputation and standing. So when considering the stakes that are at play here for both Franklin Industries and Natalie, if you think Franklin Industries side of things, they have their reputation in the industry that's up uh, at stake. They have their stock price that could take a dive should they botch the handling of this um, fraudulent reporting or this, this embezzlement rather. And there's also legal ramifications, things that could go wrong um, <clears throat> on that side if they don't handle this situation properly. From Natalie's perspective, when you think about it, her stakes are that she has her employment with Franklin that's up at stake, her reputation as an accountant in general, and potentially even her CPA licensure should, could be at stake. And so the levers of influence that Natalie has, she has three um, main levers of influence. The first is that she has the hard evidence from internal audit that fraud occurred. The second thing is that she um, has she can make an appeal to Franklin's board to set a strong tone at the top about no tolerance for fraud. And the third thing is that she can threaten to go outside the company and whistleblow. And so Natalie's most powerful response, in my mind, will have these following elements. It'll be in writing, it'll be directed and addressed to the board of directors, specifically the chairman, that way it's documented, that way um, it's reaching out to the person who seems to be the most authoritative decision maker at the company. The appeal to the board will be to set a strong tone at the top, it'll mention the internal audit evidence, it'll say that there are many people at the company who are aware of the fraud and that if the, comp if the board doesn't do anything, that Natalie's going to go to the SEC because by not setting the strong tone at the top, the company is becoming uh, complicit and it's implying that fraud is okay at Franklin. When it comes to uh, the claim of SEC whistleblowing, um, if Natalie can utilize this avenue of recourse or not, I say that she can for two reasons. Firstly, because there would be substantial injury if she didn't disclose um, this information to the SEC. Secondly, it's been at least seven months since Natalie reported this incident to industry, which is more than the 120-day threshold set in uh, the regulations. And so that concludes my presentation. Thank you.